the last five weeks of making this movie. I just finished locking the movie just a few days ago, and I flew out here to Los Angeles to do the score here with the full orchestra with James Newton Howard. And it's really a beautiful end to the process of filmmaking because it's basically a you know, hundred people playing the musical emotion that you've decided on, and it's a very powerful thing. This whole process of a year and a half of making it from the time I wrote it, they're finally doing the last voices of it, and it's a big deal to be there at the last moment. First of all, I feel like, you know, music is used way too much in movies as a crutch, as a band-aid, as I believe that editing is used as a band-aid to cover up poor storytelling. So, to avoid both those things, I cut as little as possible to hold myself to those kind of things. I mean, if they can just give that, like, 5% yeah. more emotion, you right. know, in playing this, it's... That's right. I don't know how to get that. Well, you know, they just... Right, I think if we just do it again, and they'll get it right. I, I, it's really one of those things you just... Yeah. Just say 5% more love. Every single movie, the last three movies, there's been a moment where I go, we're not gonna score this movie. Don't score the horror part of this movie at all. And only score the flashback out to the Meryl Epiphany, all the Epiphany stuff, you know? But my process always starts that way. We're not gonna have any music in this movie, all right, James, just uh, don't worry about it. And then James understands the story so well, the story that we're telling. I come in and I say, well, what would you do here? There's always an enormous advantage to working with somebody more than once, provided it's a good relationship to start with. And when Knight and I first met on The Sixth Sense, he felt that the music really didn't have a singular life of its own beyond the movie. But by the time we got into Unbreakable, we had become friends to an extent, so the rapport was more complete, it was easier. And we started an idea, which we followed through with signs, where having storyboarded the movie for me, I would then return to Los Angeles and wrote music before he started shooting the movie. I gave him the screenplay and I brought him down to Philadelphia and I brought the music editor down and I walked them through the movie. I literally talked them through the movie. I said, okay, the movie opens like this and I showed them the drawings, all the storyboards and I literally performed the movie for however it took me, like an hour and a half. The main title that you see over the opening of the movie was written before the movie was ever shot. And it's based on a three-note motif. And that motif is reprised throughout the movie in all kinds of benevolent, hostile, threatening, mysterious kinds of ways. It was not specifically written to be the main title. In fact, when we first listened to it and evaluated it, we wondered if, in fact, there was anywhere in the movie for this music to exist, although we both thought it was somehow related. And I think it was kind of a stroke of genius because it starts the movie off in such a mind-blowing way. And just the level of intensity, it's very unexpected. What it does is it sets up a context of expectations. So you know that what you're listening to in the main title is going to happen sometime in the movie. You just don't know where and you don't know quite how. It informs people about what they're about to see. I said, James, everything's gonna come from that. Then he didn't write anything for a long time. He went away and he actually did another movie. And then I went and shot the movie and edited the movie. And then once I gave up that thing of, there's gonna be no music, I came to James and I said, all right, what would you do? So then he started pulling things from that two and a half minutes and elaborating on it. I don't want the force issue. It's just me. I just need a little bit more. We're talking about a little bit more at 65. The last sequence was, without question, the most difficult film music I've ever written, the biggest challenge. It starts off as a moment of utter disbelief and shock and horror. It goes through moments of recognition. Hi, sweetie. Hi, baby. building part after the flashback when he sees the bat on the wall, that's three note motif. And then very quickly does an about face and ends up in a very tender moment. <laughs> the whole thing was about structure, which is really the secret to any writing, whether it's music or words. I was trying to go back to my three note motif as much as possible 
that's when the music is really sort of flexing its muscle and these three notes have really sort of unified to be a force. It was just the most difficult getting it right kind of process that I've ever been through. For me so far the time I would go first half, this one. Yeah. Half meaning up to the yeah. up to the couch. Okay. And then couch Let, on. Let's do one more live. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Great. And I just want a couple adjustments. Let's do it. Great. Knight and I will oftentimes have two points of view. His point of view will be performance oriented, which is an incredibly valid point of view. That that one felt right. It may be loose. The violins may have not been very together, and we have problems with the percussion. But it had an energy and a rawness that really appeals to me. And then I'm sitting there as the professional musician saying, well, it's really hard for me to get over all the flaws of that performance, and I really need an opportunity to, to work that stuff out, and it's a bargaining thing. So I think we go after it until we both feel confident that that was the one, and that's what happened in the end. The final step is I go to New York and I do the final mix of the movie, and all I'd be thinking about is the balance of dialogue, sound effects, music, dialogue, sound effects, music. So all of those decisions go on for the last month. And they can only go on when I don't have to worry about CGI, when I don't have to worry about the music, when I don't have to worry about editing, when I don't have to worry about looping a dialogue. All that's done, and I have all the elements, and now I can go, how do I want them to be heard? I think my music sounds better with effects, with sound effects, with some crashes, with the monster screaming. That was how it was designed. If I was going to write for absolute silence, I would have written different music. So I'm very comfortable with the collaborative aspect. I will defend my music as sort of comfortably and as strongly as is appropriate, but at a certain point, I relinquish control of it and understand the fact that, you know, this is somebody else's movie they made, and I am there to enhance and realize some vision with this idea. So we always get there. With Six Sense, we had a cut with no music, and Unbreakable with no music, and and Signs, especially Signs with no music, it, they they all have this poetry to them where you can hear the subtle voices of the writing and the acting. <laughs> and then ultimately, when you believe this movie can play with no music, not a drop of music from beginning to end, then you trust that James Newton Howard, your partner can come in and improve the movie. Five percent more love would cover all of this. Five percent more love is the direction. <laughs>